Well, we hadn't, uh, haven't made a video since this past November uh, when I killed my buck, which is actually right here on the same piece of property. And now it's, you know, it's late winter right now. It's uh, toward the end of February and we've been trapping a little bit. And we're just trying to get some predators off of our hunting property right here because we have a, we have a high number of coyotes and bobcat. So we're just doing our best to try to get some of those numbers down so maybe it can improve our deer hunting. So what we're gonna do today is actually take you along with us and we're gonna put a couple sets in the ground. We already have two sets right here where we're at. One is right here and one is right up this road. Um, so we're gonna go a little further in to the property, not too far, because uh, we're trying to stay kind of on the outskirts of our property. Um, one, because we know coyotes are using it we, there's coyote sign all over the place here and two just so we don't put that extra pressure on the deer uh, you know by staying on the outskirts of our property we can do that um, but a pretty simple setup uh, this is a just a hole punch for a dirt hole set it's about a two inch diameter hole and then we just got a bucket here with our saw buster hammer our stake driver and then we're running these bridger number threes modified them with the night latch and stuff we got a bucket of peat moss and then just a bag a backpack for pan covers uh we've got our lures in here uh extra extra j hooks extra cable uh earth anchors and stuff so this is what we've been carrying around uh for trapping season and we're gonna put some more in the ground here today and we'll kind of show you how we do it and you know maybe you can and a disclaimer is by no means do we know what we're doing. Uh, this is our first year trapping. So we're just trying to get into this and, and uh, maybe get some predators out of our property. So come along with us today and we'll show you at least how we do it. So right here, uh, is an example of a some people call it a pipe dream set a pvc set or a pipe set and it's basically the same idea as a regular dirt hole set but instead of a dirt hole you have a piece of small piece of pvc pipe it's about nine inches long drove down the ground with some sort of backing uh, just a small tuft of grass and then you put your bait and lure you put your bait in the in the pipe and then lure your you're backing. Um, we've got a Duke inch and three quarter trap here. It's been hunting for about a week now. Um, so haven't had, haven't caught anything yet on these sets, but still kind of optimistic because this is the location. It's right in the middle of this road. So if anything comes down this road, they got to walk right by it. So uh, we're going to let this one hunt for about another week and still no, no luck here. We'll pull it and move it somewhere else. All right, so we got up here this little flat. Um, it's a known area travel route for, for coyotes and deer and every other kind of critter that's on this property. Um, we actually have a tree stand right here. Jordan's killed a buck here in the past and he has observed coyotes right here traveling this route. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, this is actually a road that the power company cut out. It comes, it switchbacks so all the way down this mountain down toward the low area and the prominent wind the predominant wind here is most of the time in the mornings it does blow up this hollow right here so that's kind of why we picked this spot and the trail that these animals travel is literally right here um, so we're getting off the trail a little bit staying really close just to uh, give us a little better chance of an animal smelling the set so what we're going to do here is just a regular old dirt dirt hole set uh, we've got a bridger number three it's already been waxed and dyed and not latched. So we're gonna get this thing set and get it in the ground.
trap bedded right here. Got a nice solid bed, got our anchor drove in the ground, got it covered up and blended in. Um, sticky little stick here to kind of guide that couch foot right here to the pan. Here's our hole for a dirt hole set. And we got a backing here. This is where we'll stick some gland lure, some urine over here. And we'll stick some food bait, some kind of stink bait or either a real loud bait or some kind of bait down in this hole. And then the, the object is, is the coyote walks by and smells that. He comes over to investigate what's in the hole and sticks his foot right here. And the reason you do the hole, it just get, it makes that coyote stay here a little longer. It makes him work a little harder to get to the bait. Uh, gets his feet moving and increases the odd of him stepping on, stepping on that pan and firing a trap. So this is a dirt hole set. Okay, so we kind of briefly described and explained and showed a dirt hole set just right over here. Um, right here we're gonna make a, a flat set. Uh, so basically all it is is you got an old dead log that's coming out right here. And this is a big trail right through here that goes out this road. And the idea of this set is you put a little bait and some lure, some scent around this log. And the idea is that coyote is gonna walk up here and investigate the smell, maybe hike his leg up, whatever he does and pee right here on this log. And so you put all this scent out, just like I said, on a dirt hole set, just to make that coyote spend as much time as you can right here at this set. So we're gonna bed the trap right here off this log and then we'll stick some lure and bait right around this log. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is dig our trap bed. Um, <clears throat> everybody's got their own way of doing this. I like to kind of get my trap down here where it's going to be, where I think it needs to be, and then take my hammer and just kind of outline it so I'm not digging some monstrosity of a hole and having to fill all that back in. You know, if you keep your hole as small as possible, you don't have that much to fill back in, and it's a lot easier to make it look natural and get a good, sturdy trap bed. I'm just kind of outlining the trap right now. Um, so we got it marked out and here we're going to dig our, just dig our trap bed out from right here. These Bridger number threes are pretty big traps. So you got to move quite a bit of dirt to get a good bed for these Bridger traps. Put all this crap in my sifter. And it's, it's been really, really wet lately. So I did bring a bucket of peat moss uh, to use to help bed this in this wet, nasty ground. Because it's real hard to sift this wet dirt and mud. It's real hard to run it back through a sifter when it's like this. So we did bring peat moss. Uh, so that'll make bedding this trap a lot, a lot easier. Okay, so we had to do a little work to our bed here. This, this ground is really, really wet. It's really tacky and really sticky. Uh, so we had to do, ended up pulling a little bit too much dirt out. So we did have to add a little back here. We got a pretty good bed right now. Uh, before we get it perfect, we gotta drive our earth anchor into the ground here. So I'll we'll take our stake driver and put it on our anchor and drive it right down the middle of the trap bed. I like to go, normally I like to go right here. I'll put the swivel in the ground. I'll go right here to the top of the swivel. So I'm gonna drive it down just a little bit more because when you go to set your anchor, it's gonna pull up just a hair. So I'm gonna put a little bit past that swivel 
so it'll come up just a little bit. So, <clears throat> got her stuck in the ground. Now he's gonna grab your trap, grab hold of your chain, and set that anchor. And I don't care what you do, you ain't gonna pull it up like that. So, you got the anchor bedded, her anchor drove in the ground, then just take, and take your hammer and dig out a little hole for the rest of that chain to sit down in. So it's not obstructing your trap bed, making it set funny. Whew, that steak dryer about to kick my butt. We got us a little crevice there for our chain and our anchor, the rest of it. Drop it down in that hole. Try to get it to sit right in there. quite a bit of rocking right there on that trap it may be sitting on this swivel so pull it back up here and see what's going on with this so looks like we're gonna have to add some material under this these levers and these jaws because if the coyote walks up here and steps on any corner of this trap and it moves it's over so we got our trap bedded really solid there's no rocking on any of the corners whatsoever so it's ready to cover up from now so there's a bunch of different things you can use for a pan cover that i got pack of 24 of these fiberglass pan covers from F&T and they work great. They, it's got a little notch cut out for the dog. It sits right over the pan. And then there you go. And we got some rain coming and it's supposed to rain a little bit and then go back, drop back down to freezing temperatures. So we're gonna use some of this peat moss to put around our trap. Uh, it can take a whole lot of water and not freeze and not get real muddy and wet. So we'll start with some peat moss for the majority of uh, covering it up will be peat moss. Sometimes this stuff does come with some big chunks in it and some sticks and stuff like that. So it's always a good idea to sift it before you do put it on your trap. You don't want anything to get in there that could potentially stop your trap from firing. So, uh, if you do this long enough, you're gonna learn it the hard way, but always find your pan. Once you get it covered up, find your pan. That way you know where not to push down. So, we got our pan located. We're just gonna come in here on the sides and just reassure us that that trap is really solid. It's in the ground really, really good. And it's not moving whatsoever. Once we got that really good and packed down, we'll cover a pan back up. Um, a lot of guys use a whisk broom for this, which I do have one. You just use a small little broom or a brush to do this, but it's just a whole lot faster to do it with your hand, really. Just kind of smooth all this out. Build it back up to the natural level here, natural grade of the ground, best we can. And then I always like to come back and make a little low spot right where my pan is. Try to make it a little bit lower than the rest of the set just to encourage that coyote to place his foot right there in the pan. 
I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but it is a little bit lower right over top of the pan. So blend this in really good. Bring some of the natural stuff back in here and start blending this set right here pretty good. I do have some of this original dirt here. It's not going to sift real well because it is so wet. We'll try to blend it in with this natural and the original dirt that was here just to give it a more natural look. So if anybody knows, if anybody's ever tried to trap cow, coyotes, you know how picky they are and really how hard they are to catch. So anything you can do to increase your odds of catching one, the better off you'll be. there we'll just work on blending the set back in the best we can you can take some sticks and you kind of use it some sticks or a leaf as kind of a guide where that coyote's gonna where you want that coyote to set his foot really tell the animal where to go and our pan is is right there so I know where my jaw is you know, stick a, maybe put a stick here and leaves are really cool because as soon as that as soon as that trap fires those leaves are going to break up it's not going to affect your catch at all so leaves are really nice to have around to work on blending that set back in so our pan is right here we want to try to encourage that animal to stand there as much as we can. Um, that's pretty good right there. That's a pretty good blend. Got all this stuff blended back in pretty well. So we got our set blended back in. Now it's time to bait and lure this this set. Uh, we're just going to use a little bit of food lure just to kind of stop this coyote, and then we'll use a uh, pretty good glob of gland lure here and some urine so and the food lure that we're going to use is not a real loud lure it's actually really it doesn't have much smell at all it's just hall bakers coyote and fox bait um, it's going to get a little bit of this stuff on a stick so i can find a good stick Got some of this stuff on a stick here. We'll put it right here on this log. And try to try to get it up in here as best we can. Really make them work for it the most you can. We'll use a generous amount of lure on this because, like I said, we just want the the coyote to. Spend as much time as possible right here at this set, and maybe even get a little bit more here on a stick and kind of tuck it up under the log right there. So we got a little food lure right there. Uh, put some more of the Yodel Dog bland lure out. under that log too. 
and last but not least is some urine. We're going to place this, uh, put a splash on this side of the set, as well as a little bit up on this log as well. So we got our trap bedded and blended back in. We got scent and lure and bait on this log, a little bit of urine over here. And hopefully within the next couple days, we've got a cold front come back through. We'll have a coyote walk through here and get caught right here in this set. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you like these videos. Maybe we can make some more. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next couple days, we'll try to show you a coyote. Well, uh, just pulled up to this set, this dirt hole set had been here for a while, and we got a cow in the trap. This is the first cow that we've caught right here. Uh, so, we're going to get him took care of, and then check the rest of these traps here. Um, this is actually... A, we got a bunch of trail camera pictures of this one and big tricolored coyote. So <clears throat> we're going to dispatch this coyote and then go ahead and check the rest of the traps. Well, we got that coyote took care of. Checked the rest of the traps. Didn't have any luck. Uh, we'll keep on it and remake this set and. Hopefully pick up another cow right here. This is a small male cow. I don't know if you can see it or not back there, but it's a small male. So we'll keep trying to get them out of our hunting property here. And I hope this video helped a little bit. And I hope you can use some stuff and maybe get some predators off your property. Thanks for watching.